<sighs> this is just great. This is all just fantastic, I tell you. Mizuki is really angry at us. She hates us now, no doubt. Boss and Peter are hiding stuff from us. Iris is scared of us now because we have her as a suspect. And Otai is being an idiot and ran away with her to god knows where. Now in 10 times more danger than before because the serial killer is no doubt gonna try and kill Iris. We hit rock bottom, doubt him. We are just not good enough. What do you think Oda is, Mama? Do you know... Do you have like any clues as to where his, as to his whereabouts? Ota? The boy I asked to watch the bar? I'd say he's too old to be called a boy, but yeah. Even though I still see him as a boy. As a kid, in my eyes. He was already gone when I came back. All I saw was you getting your beauty sleep on the floor. Damn it, Ota. What are you thinking? It appears that he took off with Iris. What were you doing during all this? My power was shut down due to the stun gun. I have rebooted in safe mode and am now operational. Oh. Date, the boss is calling. Oh, great. Oh, how am I gonna report this one? Just... Just tell her that what happened here is a... State secret. And that she doesn't need to know. Date, listen. Stay calm, but this is an emergency. Just now, the killer... Let me guess. The killer either went after Iris and murdered her. He found the body. That or Mizuki got, ki got kidnapped. Or you're just calling us to say that the zombie apocalypse is happening out there. Just watch the video. I mean, I could get, I could use some zombie apocalypse action right now. I sent the address to Iba. Oh God, Iris! Iris! And she's at the warehouse again. No, that's... The criminal is streaming this live. And she's still alive. Which means we still have a chance to save her. Come on, let's go! Iba, the source. Identify. The Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse, Koto District. In fact, that's probably what the killer wants us to do in the first place. Okiura? Date, focus. We need to get to the site, now. I think my mind ran out of marble. Alright, I'm just gonna take this bottle with me. We still have a long night ahead of us. Uh, I don't even get it. Why now? Why are we getting a live stream of Iris getting murdered in this timeline? What's our ETA? And not in the other timelines. What makes this so different? Our destination is far from here. 20 minutes at the fastest. Please, please let me make it in time. Uh, am I am I seeing this right? Oh god. Oh god, that soul is going fast. That is buying us some more time. I get my foot out the gas the whole time. I could feel the sweat in my palms. The engine raised a high-pitched scream. I could barely hear it. My heartbeat was pounding in my ears, shaking me to the core. How much time has passed? The you know, time itself had disappeared. Eventually, the car reached a long bridge. 
Shortly after, the image changed. Oh, great. No, it can't be. No. Stop! God, no. no! Well, I guess so. In the end, we have been bested by Ice Bear from the We Bear Bears cartoon. I guess it is time to drink all night, boys. Harbor Warehouse District, Monday, 3.35 a.m. <laughs> okay, what the hell? Oh, that too. <laughs> Police headquarters, Monday, ten zero two AM. There you are. Finally. I was looking all over for you. It's rare to see you down like this. But it's understandable. You blame yourself for this, don't you? Beating yourself up about taking Iris to marble. And about letting Ota get the upper hand on you. Am I right? Shall I tell you what Investigation HQ thinks? Ota Matsushita is a criminal stalker who committed murder-suicide. Ota had a selfish love for Iris. He was under the delusion that Iris loved him too. But Iris refused Ota. So Ota decided that he and Iris should be together in the afterlife, killed her, then killed himself. Oh, that's a lot of bullshit. That's ridiculous. Ota would never kill Iris. And how do you explain the other two murders? Iris's left eye was hollowed out. Just like Renju and Shoko. Those three murders were definitely executed by the same person. The new Cyclops killer. Not to mention that, without further evidence, it very well can be that it was someone else that killed both Iris and Ota, and put Ota in the bear costume to make us think it was him that did it. 
that he committed suicide afterwards. I mean, it's not like the live video last night was pre was very detailed. If he he closed, like the killer closed the live video at some point. He could just left it open while he was committing suicide, but he didn't. We never seen Oda and the Ice Bear in the same shot, so it does threaten your idea that it was Oda that did it all of it, but that's not conclusive evidence either. There's no way that's Ota. Too many pieces don't fit. Too many contradictions, like killing Iris. Such as? Oh, that's behavior during the video. Stay away from Tessa! Ota showed himself on the stream. If he was going to kill Iris and then himself, why would he do that? The only reason you would show yourself like that is to prove that you weren't the culprit. Ota and the polar bear on the screen at the same time would prove that they're not the same person. That behavior would be totally unnecessary if he was going to commit suicide anyway. Well... Maybe he wasn't planning on dying at first. After he killed Iris, he realized that he couldn't live with himself. So he lies down on the workbench and turns on the ice cutting machine himself? So we're talking about a change of heart? In which case, why kill her in the first place? If he didn't tend to kill himself so that he and Iris, quote unquote, live together in the af in the afterlife then what reason would he have to kill her in the first place i don't buy it what about the polar bear costume the culprit was wearing a polar bear costume probably to hide their identity but if murder suicide was the plan the costume served no purpose yeah, truly. He could have been dressed as Sonic the Hedgehog, and it still would have been—it still would have been as random. Otto had no incentive to kill Ranger. Maybe he was thinking like this: the reason Iris and I can't be together is because her agency prohibits it, making the president Renju the ultimate bad guy in his mind. Mizuki is Ota's close friend. Do you really think Ota would kill his friend's father? Ota had no incentive to kill Shoko either. Shoko was married to Renju. Maybe he was trying to get at Renju by killing her. That's a stretch. Yeah, I mean... They were divorced. They didn't really have that much of a connection lately. They've been divorced for years. Yeah. Ota knows all about it. He wouldn't use Shoko to get to Renju. There are some additional discrepancies. I analyzed the investigation report. Judging by his wound, Ota was stabbed in the side by a kitchen knife or something similar. Are you sure? I am. I told the boss what I but what I but found. Oh, I know that. Well, Ota could have stabbed himself. Maybe he thought it would be a fatal wound, but when it didn't work, he went for the ice cutting machine. Then, shouldn't we have recovered the kitchen knife from the scene? And if he were to go for the fatal wound, why not go for the heart? Or something like that. Why go for the side? Maybe he threw it in the ocean. Boss, come on. Ota goes out to the water, stabs himself in the gut, throws the knife over the side, then walks back to the warehouse? In which case, there will be some blood splatter on the way back towards the warehouse, since he stabbed himself. And the blood will drip on the ground on the way there. Like, there should still be blood there if that is what you're thinking. If that is what you think happened. Well, I wasn't being serious. I didn't think Oda was the culprit from the beginning. I was just playing devil's advocate for HQ. Really? Yes, really. Anyway, Ota didn't kill anyone, and he didn't kill himself. Here's what I think happened. Stay away from Tessa! 
Oten knew Iris was kidnapped, so he rushed onto the scene. That's when he saw the culprit wearing the polar bear costume. He tried to fight him off, but ended up being stabbed in the side. He was weakened and losing blood at the culprit's mercy. The culprit forced him into the costume, then under the ice cutting machine. And then... Then, who is the culprit? I wish I knew. We're up to four victims. But Ota was a special circumstance. He wasn't specifically targeted by the culprit. Right. And he was the only one to not have his eye pulled out. So let's focus on the three other victims. Shoko, Renju, and Iris. I mean, if you are to... Okay, you're definitely not going to agree with us, boss, because you don't think that there is any connection, but... Me, personally... If I'm to think about this having a connection to the old killings... There were four victims. And maybe this is going to have as well. We only have one more victim, and then... It could very well be possible that the killer is gonna is gonna escape scot free. Although the killings are a little bit different, Iris got killed by by Saul here. The circumstances are very different, so it's not necessarily that whoever's doing this is copying the old killings. What connects these three? Connections. If you find a connection between the victims, you find a connection to the culprit. That's the theory of investigation, right? You think the new Cyclops killer is related to them somehow? Maybe, maybe not. But it's a good starting point. Renju and Shoko's daughter, Mizuki. Mizuki has the strongest connections with all three victims. Shoko and Renji were her parents, and she was close friends with Iris. She was good friends with Ota, too. But that's why I could never believe Mizuki would kill all four of them. Thinking of her as a suspect is ridiculous. I mean, I would understand Mizuki killing Ota, out of all people. She would more than likely be angry at Ota for, for running like a coward from the Bloom Park and leaving her alone. But besides that, I, she is unlikely to be the, to be the killer. Iris' mother, Hitomi. Hitomi and Renju are definitely linked. They were high school classmates. And she did say that she met Shoko twice. But I can't imagine she would kill Iris in such a gruesome way. No matter what the circumstances were, it seems impossible to me. Mama? Renju and Shoko were connected to the Kumakuras. But there's no connection to Iris. Yeah, there's no doubt. The mama, he, he couldn't be Mama. I mean, he was a diehard fan of Iris. Which could make him crazy enough to kill to kill her. In similar fashion to how one would think that if Ota wouldn't have her, then nobody can. And they would live. like The same kind of mentality that uh, Boss was thinking of. That told to the HQ and all that about some... Undying love of some sort, but nah, I doubt that Momo would go that far. Congressman So Sejima. Renju, Shoko, and So. There is a connection between Renju and Shoko through the Kumakuras, but again, I can't see any clear link to Iris. Oh, that was mother, Mayumi. Mayumi had motive for killing Iris and Renju. Mayumi hated Iris, and she didn't think well of Lemnus Gate either. And since Renju is the president... Anyway, the weak point is Renju's ex-wife, Shoko. I can't imagine why Mayumi would kill her. And above all else, she would never harm her only son, let alone kill him. Uh, she's gonna be so sad. She's gonna, she's gonna be so sad hearing the news. Me. I know Renju and Shoko, and I'm connected to Iris, but I have an alibi. Aside from Shoko, there's no way I could have killed any of them. Yep. 
For Renju, we were with Mizuki all the time from her Somnium to all the way to discovering his body. And it was in that span, uh, in that time span, that Renju got killed. So it's impossible for him to have done it. And for Iris and Oda, well, it all happened live. So there is no way Dati could have done this. No. Now that I think about it, Shoko too. I don't remember killing her. My memories from six years ago are missing, but I still have my memory of recent events. And if I start doubting myself now... Date, I can say without a doubt that there is zero possibility you are the new Cyclops killer. Yeah, I'm thinking that too. There's no way that he is the new Cyclops killer. Something happened six years ago. Like, we could be thinking of the worst case scenario, but for this current murder case, I'm having my doubts. I have been working with you for years. I know better than anyone that you are innocent. I thought it over, boss. Of the people I know, I can't peg any of them as the murderer. And no leads to pursue? No. Then there's only one thing you can do. Continue your investigation. Do whatever it takes to get the culprit. To get justice for the victims. You're right. Got it, boss. Story of our lives. Alright, well, we have many, many places that, we, that we're gonna have to go to and investigate. Let's go to the cold storage warehouse and investigate the bodies ourselves. I stepped into the cold storage warehouse. The air conditioning wasn't running, but it was still cold. The temperature hadn't raised, hadn't raised much at all. The cold air sunk into my skin. But the center of my body was burning hot. I see. Hmm. Hey! Uh, Kaguya? Kakashi? Uh, no, nothing so far. The inspector is doing his duties, as usual. Alright, well, talk to you a little bit later, Togami. Um, policeman? Any progress on the investigation? I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. Have you found any claws or... bear hair? No? Nothing? The body is officer. Alright, well... Let's check the workbench first. Iris and Ota were. I am sure you are already aware of Ota's time of death. Just before I arrived, about three thirty in the morning. And the cause of death. Right, about that. Ota had a stab wound from a kitchen knife in his side. Correct. What was the exact cause of death? Was it the knife wound or? I cannot determine that. Yeah. I mean, it could have been... Well, I mean, a stab to the side isn't really fatal. But it could have been... It could be that he died long before getting sawed. Or, I don't know. I can conclude that the knife wound was at least close to being fatal. Close. And it could be that he lost a lot of blood and... And went unconscious. Even if Ota was still alive on the workbench, he was certainly on the verge of death. If he weren't already extremely weak, we would expect to see more signs of struggle. We found Iris, like, back over there when we arrived here. Maybe what I was trying to help Iris, jumping at a criminal. That led to a scuffle, and Oda ended up with a knife wound in his side. He lost all his power to fight back. He was, for he was forcibly put inside a costume, then finally cut open by the ice cutting machine. But why? Why did the culprit put the costume on Ota? Yeah, true. Again, it can be that the killer wanted us to think that Ota was the killer, when actually he was somebody else. Otherwise, what would be the point in putting Ota in this costume in the first place? He could have just put Ota on the table and ran away. Unknown. 
Iris and Lila's body are under autopsy. Their bodies aren't here anymore. Right here, Iris and Lila were... Hmm, a forklift. I don't see anything special about it. Ice cutting machine. Iris and Lila were sliced in two by this ice cutting machine. Iris and Oda. Iris's estimated time of death and cause of death have been confirmed. The video was not a recording. It was a live stream, filmed in real time. Which means Iris's time of death is 3.20 a.m. Iris also had her left eye removed. Yeah. And like Renju and Shoko, Iris's left eyeball has not been recovered. True. He could be that once more. Iris was put on that sink machine from before, and then the killer got her got her here and killed her in the end. Actually, hmm, nice cutting machine. A hook is hanging from a ceiling crane. This forklift is old. It does not appear to be functional. It has not been moved in some time. A forklift. The tire and floor are covered with a layer of ice. Alright, let's check this equipment over here. This is what the criminal used to stream. All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. <laughs> it's like a sick joke over here. Iris is known for live streaming as well, so... The killer live streamed this as well. Ugh. I have logged into the Wi Fi in this warehouse. Okiura Fishery Co. Ltd. is listed as the owner. However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. Why are you serious? They wrote the password on the router? I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras, the same Okiuras we know. But Renju barely had any connection to this, though. Like as of late. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. Hmm. Date, we should get moving. Officers from the local jurisdiction are checking the warehouse thoroughly. We will not find anything of importance here. Yeah, you're right. You can ask CSI to inform you if they find anything. CSI? Are you kidding me? After all that discussion that I had before about how the CSI are a bunch of lazy fucks? All right. Uh, Alright, well, I'm heading out, Kazuya. Let me know if you find anything. I let them know when the. I let them know and then left the warehouse. I'm kidding, of course. It's Kagami! It's Kagami! When I left the warehouse, I saw Pewter. What is he doing here? Yeah, I wonder about that. What is Peter doing here? He walked up to me while I was trying to work it out. Date, I have to talk to you about something. Right. Huh? About the original Cyclops serial killings. Why this all of a sudden? Because I want you to solve this case, Mr. Date. I want you to find who did this and bring them to justice. So, if I can help you, even a little. Why didn't you say anything at Abyss? Because boss didn't want to. The boss was there. I couldn't speak openly in front of her. So, I decided to meet you here. Alright, well, thank you, Peter. Alright, let's hear it. Earlier. I told you that I was completely certain the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. 
I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. Let me explain why. I'll start by telling you the identity of the Cyclops killer. Although, it's more accurate to say, killers. Multiple killers. More than one? In the first series of killings, the culprit had an accomplice. One of them was born a murderous psychopath. The other is Rohan Kumakura, the previous chairman of the Kumakuras. Rohan? They each had a role to play. The murderer committed the homicide, and Rohan removed the eyeball. Huh. How about Rohan? Eighteen years ago, Rohan took a woman's eye. She was already dead. He put his finger into her eye socket and gouged it out. The reason why was simple. He was fascinated by women's eyes. Their beauty stimulated his greed and his desire to possess them. He needed to have them. To make them his own. Driven by this instinctive impulse, he took the woman's eye. From then on, he acquired a grotesque obsession with the eyes of dead women. He was very particular about his need that the eye belonged to a deceased woman. But even being the head of a Yakuza gang, there weren't too many opportunities for him to indulge. His deepest, darkest desire went unfulfilled for years. However, he soon met his ideal partner, the aforementioned psychopath. The Cyclops killer would commit the murder, and Rohan would take the eye. Thus, a mutually beneficial relationship was established. This was the origin of the Cyclops serial killings. At about the same time, you were assigned to Abyss. I'm having my doubts about this. So you're saying that the way Rohan is doing is somebody else is murdering those victims and then he takes the eye. Yeah, I don't know about that one. And I can't really say much about this because it is from the other timeline. We we learned that the other sync machine that we found needs the eye gouged before in order for us to use that sync machine with the victim. Hmm. Why did the Cyclops case get classified? That I don't know. The details of the original Cyclops serial killings case have become nebulous over time. I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, these women have, like, no connection to, like, anything. From what I've been told, from what we've been told. These appear like really random... Women. Why would somebody sync with them using that machine that we found? Because if there is really nothing important with them, and what would what would be the point of using the sync machine on them? In which case, yeah, Ro like Peter's idea over here would stand. It would be a completely different circumstance. Not to mention that we are talking about gouging the other side, the other eye. In these killings, however, the right eye, or left eye, like... The other eye is... Right or left? I, I mean, I know it's right from my perspective, but it's the left eye of the victim and such. I always, I always find it hard to describe that sort of thing, like... Somebody's left arm, somebody's right arm... Like, from which side? From my point or from their point of view? I think it's from their point of view, in which case, it's the left eye. The new killings have their left eyes gouged. Whereas for the other killings, they were the right. Even the official investigation material contains nothing of value. I am unable to draw any conclusions from them. You really have no idea? If I did, I would tell you. Who is the murdered psychopath? 
He was born with a brain dysfunction. Due to damage to the posterior pituitary gland, he was unable to properly secrete oxytocin. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone linked to feelings of love, affection, and trust. It is colloquially referred to as the love hormone. It causes a tranquilizing effect which improves mood and relieves stress. Damn. I could use some of that. It is normally secreted when the body makes contact with an object of affection, such as an embrace or caress. I'm sure you know what this implies, but he was unable to feel love in the way that we do. However, he was able to experience a substitute. His brain was wired in such a way that allowed him to feel satisfaction through other means. Through murder. Due to the unique idiosyncrasies of his brain, he was able to release large amounts of dopamine and endorphins by performing a certain action. What was it? Diff. Murder. Dopamine is a hormone linked to the reward system of the brain. Yeah. The pleasant feeling attained through accomplishment is dopamine. Endorphins are a kind of brain narcotic. They dull pain and create a feeling of happiness. He got pleasure from killing people? It's slightly more complicated than that. Killing people was the only way he could get pleasure. He was 12 when he took his first life. That enlightened him to the pleasure of murder, which he would do again and again. Okay, well, in that case, who is it? You're talking so detailed about this person's brain status and the fact that they killed somebody at when they were 12 years old. The original Cyclops killer had an accomplice. There were two Cyclops killers. And one of them was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Rohan committed suicide by jumping to his death one year ago. That means... Pewter, tell me this. One of the original killers is dead, I know that. But that means one remains. Who is he? After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. Oh. So you're talking about inmate 89. They actually picked him up on other charges. But, in any case, he is currently serving a life sentence in Fuchu Prison. Fuchu Prison? Yes. What's his name? In prison, he doesn't have a name. He is simply called Number 89. Number 89? I know who killed Shogun Adami. Hmm. So that's why he's in prison. So, now you know why I said that. That the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Because one is dead and the other is behind bars. I see. Neither of them had the opportunity. Well, we know that there is a connection between Date and, uh, and Falco. So... I think that there is a connection. I think that that there truly has some connection to the old serial killings, even if he may not be the Cyclops killer. Could very well be possible. Okay, well, thank you for this, Peter. Now it's time to go to Matsushita Diner and talk to Mayumi. Oh, poor woman. This is the second time we're going to be talking to her, and then um, we're going to have to bring her the bad news. If not, she probably already heard this. If you heard this before, then it is a lot easier than it is a lot easier on us. But if she didn't, then we're definitely going to have to tell her the bad news, which is definitely going to be a lot more difficult. It was so quiet; I felt like I could hear the floating dust. I stepped inside. I thought it was empty. But I saw a shadow in the corner of my eye. It was Mayumi. It was like watching a decaying old tree cling pathetically to the earth. Hey there, Mayumi. Uh, about... about Oto. Nah, uh, she's not gonna see anything, is she?
Yeah. This is your fault. Yeah. I heard from the police. Because you didn't take care of Iris. My boy Ota got involved. Date, I looked into the investigation report. Mayumi confirmed Ota's body early this morning. I see. I'm sorry. I want to be alone right now. Did you not hear me? I said leave! <gasps> Date, let's go. She is in no state to talk. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I guess so. I'm definitely not gonna be able to talk to her in this state right now. Uh, well, let's go. Let's go back home and talk to Mizuki. And oh boy, is this gonna be a very awkward and very bad moment over here. Mizuki is angry at us. Mizuki is curled up on the sofa. She looks like a small animal frightened by a predator. Hey Mizuki. About Yeah, she's not gonna talk. She cannot even be angry at us right now. Mizuki must know about Iris Nota. Of course. The news was distributed heavily across the internet. Not just in Japan, but worldwide. Three days ago, Mizuki discovered her mother's body. Two days ago, her father's. This morning, two of her best friends. Jesus freaking Christ. It is completely understandable that she is at her mental limit. I remember, Date. You basically just left her alone. You just basically went on your own. Can I be left alone for a while? Are you okay? Yeah. And yeah, she certainly didn't seem so. But I cannot stay by her side forever. Iba, contact Abyss. See if they can get Mizuki a good counselor. Understood. I stayed with her for a little while. But we didn't speak. Having nothing more to say, I left. Uh Great. Fan deadly tastic and no doubt Hitomi is not gonna be able to say anything about this. She's probably gonna be dead silent as well. Maybe. Or maybe. When I visited the saga and household, I found Hitomi with a hollow look in her eyes. She let me in and asked me to sit on the sofa. I agreed and sat down. But after that, I couldn't say a single word. A heavy silence weighed on both of us. <sighs> you can see the trees and sky outside. In the language of flowers, the iris means good news and hope. When I saw the flowers this morning, I just knew something good would happen. Ah, uh, what a sick joke. Iris. There's a drawing on the wall. Oda was one of my students. I taught him in elementary school. I heard it from the police. Oda tried to help Iris and ended up... I don't know what to say. I have no words. I
Iris was my everything. We always went everywhere together. Whether it was buying clothes, or going to the movies, or taking a walk, or going shopping at the supermarket. When she was young, she would just hold one of my fingers. Her hand was too small to hold mine. Uh, God damn it, woman. Why are you talking about this sort of stuff right now? And it was two, then three, and finally she could hold my hand. I mean, we already said enough as is. You don't, you don't have to attempt to kill me right now with this sort of stuff. But eventually, she left my hands altogether. She started crossing her arms, being independent. Even though she needed constant attention growing up. Her memories are a part of this room. When she was a baby, she fell off that sofa and cried and cried. One day, she tore up her picture book all over the floor here. <laughs> Another time, she drew with crayons all over the window. <laughs> she painted my portrait on Mother's Day. Scratches on the floor, chipped plates, burn marks on the table, stains on the cushions. Everything you see. <laughs> It all holds a memory of her. <laughs> but... Why? Alright, you know what, that's enough. I, I'm gonna need a break.